So if we were to think about the GraphQL schema in terms of CRUD actions, the first thing that would make sense to implement on the chat type, let's say, would be to first of all create a chat. Because right now we could write a query to fetch all the chats for a user, but it doesn't really make sense to do that because we really don't have any chats in the database yet. So first of all, let's create the means to add chat to the database. So we're going to extend the mutation type and we're going to write a mutation to create a chat. I think it makes sense to call it start chat as in starting a chat or starting a conversation with someone. So we're going to accept a few arguments. First of all, we're going to accept a list of IDs. Well, in this case, to be more specific, it's going to be a list of user IDs. So this will be an array of object IDs. And this is going to be a list of users who are going to be part of the conversation. And in the end, we might return the chat type. And besides that, we might also accept a title as a string but we're gonna keep it optional for the time being. And the last thing is I'm gonna also add the new auth directive that we've just created, because if you're not signed in, you're not allowed to create a chat. You have to first sign in. So with that, let's go back to resolvers. We're gonna create a new resolver. Let's call it chat.js. So in here, we're gonna export default an object. So we'll have a mutation. We're gonna have start chat with the familiar arguments root, args, context, and info. So I'm going to save the file and then back in index, we're going to also import chat from chat and we're going to export it as part of the array. And then when creating a chat, we're going to have to do a bit of validation first. So we're going to call joy.validate. We're going to pass in the args, the schema, and we're going to also set abort early to false. So let's first of all work on the validation part. So we're going to import, let's call it start chat schema from schemas. So we're going to create a new schema and let's call it chat.js. We're going to import joy from joy. So we're going to export a constant, let's call it start chat. So in here, we're going to call joy.object.keys. So we're going to pass in a bunch of keys. So we're going to have a title, which will be joy.string. We could set the minimum length to six, maximum to let's say 50. And we won't make it required, but we're going to set a label to title. And then for user IDs, once again, this is going to be an array. So now if we go back to the browser, so now joy already has means to validate arrays, we just have to look at the API reference. So if you go to the array section, we have quite a few methods that we can use. So for example, the items method is going to allow us to list the specific items that we want to allow for or prohibit in the array. So with that, let's go back in here. So we're going to call the array method. We could also use the minimum and maximum methods. The minimum is going to set the minimum limit, the maximum, of course, the maximum upper limit. So with that, we can say, let's say the minimum could be one element and the maximum would be, let's say the maximum in a single conversation would be 100 users. All of those user IDs have to be unique. And finally, we can call the items method. Now in here, we're basically going to define every object ID or every string in the array. So in this case, it's going to be joy.string. In this case, we actually need to validate that the string is going to be an actual user ID because what we basically expect for the user IDs properties, we expect it to be an array, but not an array of numbers, of course, an array of strings, but once again, not an array of simple strings, like let's say alphanumeric characters, it has to be a specific type of string. So it has to be an object ID. So we already have a validation for an object ID inside of the user resolver. So if you remember, we had to do this part of validation to make sure that the ID that the client is passing is an actual object ID. So we actually run into the same use case before. So what I think makes sense to do right now is to create a custom validator for Joy that is going to validate object IDs specifically because there's not much in Joy that can help us validate a string to make sure that it's an actual object ID. So what we can do is we can actually extend Joy to create a custom validator. So I'll create a file, let's call it joy.js. Now talking about extension, if we go back to the docs, well, there's a section that can help us to extend Joy to create a custom validation rule. So an example can look something like this. So we're gonna call joy.extend. We can pass a function or we can also pass an object. We'll define the base for our validator. We're gonna give it a name. We're going to give it a set of messages or just a single message if it's only one. And we can call in either the pre-hook or we can also define a set of rules. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here. First of all, let's import joy from joy. 
So the custom rule that we're going to define is going to be called object ID. Once again, we're going to call joy.extend. We'll pass in an object. So the base will be, of course, joy.string because we're going to be extending a string. And now name, we're going to call it string because we are extending a string in the end. As far as the language goes, so this one will be an object. So I'm going to call it object ID. And we're just going to say must be a valid object ID. And now for the actual rules, we're going to create an array. This is going to contain a single object. So we'll give it a name of object ID and we'll pass in the validate function. So this one is going to take four parameters. So we're going to have params. We're going to have the value, state and options. And this one is going to use the shorthand syntax. And so it's going to be a function as the method on the object that we pass to the array. So inside of the function, we're going to check if the value passed to joy is in fact a valid object ID. And for that, we can basically go back Back to our user.js and we can simply copy that piece of code. So let's go back to joy. I'll paste that in. We're going to have to import mongoose from mongoose and we're going to check if the value is in fact a valid object ID. And now instead of throwing an error, so what we can do looking back at the docs once again, we can return a call to this dot create error instead. So let's do that. We're going to create an error and now the key will be string which is the name of this property dot object ID. The object ID part refers back to the key on the language object. So we're going to reference that message. We'll pass in nothing for context. We'll pass in the state and options from this function. So the state and options that we receive as arguments And this function needs to be a traditional function. That's why we're using the shorthand syntax and not an arrow function because we need to have access to the this keyword. And now if this condition fails, so if it's not a valid object ID, the condition will return false. So we're going to trigger an error in joy. Otherwise, we're going to return back the actual value. And now what we can do is we can actually export default and extension of joy. So let's do export default joy.extend so we're going to call object id so instead of extending it in the same constant we're going to export default the extension but we might also have multiple constants in the future so let's keep it like that so now let's save the file and if we go back to schemas we're going to be importing joy from joy so it's going to be the joy.js file and because of that we're going to have access to the object id property so this way we can say that the string has to be an object id and now the other conundrum that we need to consider is the id of the signed in user so what can happen is that the client who's sending off the query can pass in an array let's say the first one is going to be the ID of user one, but they can also send in the ID of themselves. So the user that's actually logged into the system. And this is going to complicate the conditions quite a bit. So I think the easiest way to go around this is to prohibit the clients from sending their own ID as part of the array. So this way, once the validation is done, we can simply do arguments that user IDs and we can push the user ID or the ID of the signing user to that array. So now to exclude something, we can call the not method and we can pass in the user ID inside. Of course, we don't have access to it. So we're going to accept it as the argument to that function. And once we get it, we're going to make sure that the array doesn't contain that user ID. Finally, I'll give a label to this string. We're going to call it user ID like this. And now on the user's ID itself, we can also supply a label. So this could be user IDs in plural. So now with that, let's go back to index. We're going to re-export everything from chat. So we can go back to the resolver and we can actually do the import of start chat. So we're going to pass it as the second argument. So this is going to be the schema and we're going to need to also import joy from joy. So for the time being, let's just do an await. So this way we'll have to make the function asynchronous, but this one needs to be invoked as a function. So we're going to need to pass in the user ID. So let's actually destructure it from request session and the request of course is going to come from context. So now that we've done that, we're going to return a simple object from this mutation for the time being. But if we go back to queries, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the sign in query to sign in to the app. So let's paste it in. This is going to sign me in. From then on, we're going to write a simple mutation. This one is going to start a chat. So we're going to pass in an array of object IDs. So let's say if we were to pass in an empty array, let's see what's going to happen. This time the validation fails because we're passing in an empty array. Let's say I were to pass an empty string. This will also fails because it cannot be an empty string. It has to be an object ID. I'll pass in gibberish. This also fails because now it's not a valid object ID again. 
And now let's say if I were to pass in my own object ID, this should also fail. And we get the user ID contains an invalid value, so that's perfect. So now let's open a new tab. I'm gonna do a query, um, users, so let's get them by ID. Actually, we only have one. So in that case, I'm gonna open a new window. Let's go to localhost 3000. So I'm gonna now copy the signup mutation. I'm gonna paste it in. So let's say we're gonna create a new user, max at gmail.com with the username of max. So let's try running it. Okay, so the username has to be four characters long. Okay, let's actually change that. I'll go back to schemas. This would be user.js. I'm just gonna change the minimum on the username to three. All right, let's try again. So this will create the user, perfect. And I'll switch back to our main window. Now if we run again, we're gonna get the second user. So let's pass that object ID, so this should succeed now and the validation passes, so that's perfect. So now once the basic validation succeeds, what we need to do is we need to verify that every single ID inside of user IDs array is in fact valid, but not only valid from the perspective of Mongoose, as in being a valid object ID, but also being a valid user in the database. So it sounds like we need to do a count on the user model where the ID property is inside of the arguments.userIDs range. So what we can do is we can actually restructure it so let's get the title let's get the user ids from arguments so we'll pass in the user ids and we can do a count of documents on that query so we're going to find all the documents with the given ids and we're going to do a count on them and now this one we can assign to a constant so let's say ids found so how many ids were found in fact and this one needs to be with an await keyword as well because this is asynchronous so we're going to say if ids found doesn't equal the length of user IDs. So let's say the clients applied five different object IDs to the user IDs array, but if we were only able to find four, so if one of them is not valid, we're going to throw new user input error. And this one we need to pull in from Apollo Server Express. Actually, it's pulling it from Apollo Server Core because that's the core package. Apollo Server Express is simply going to re-export it. But either way, we're gonna throw in an error. So let's say one or more user IDs are invalid. We're gonna stay generic. And now we also need to pull in the user itself. So let's do user from models. So let's do a quick return of an empty object. So we're gonna go back in here. Let's say I change the ID from 64 to 63. If I try it now, as you can see, we get one or more IDs are invalid. If I change it back, run it, and it passes. So once again, the way it's gonna work is it's gonna do a count of all the user IDs, and we're just gonna say if the count doesn't match the number of IDs provided, that means that at least one ID was not valid. And in that case, we're just gonna throw in an error. But otherwise, we could do user IDs dot push. So we're gonna push in the ID of the signed in user. Once again, the reason we have to do this is because we want to add the user that's signed in to the conversation. So from then on, we can do chat.create, we're gonna pass in the title. We're gonna also pass in the user IDs. But if you remember, if you look at the models chat, we called it users. So we're gonna assign users to user IDs and we're gonna call a wait on it and assign it to a chat variable. And once that's done, we also need to update the users. Now, if you look at the user model, you're gonna see that every user model also has a list of chats in it. So what we need to do is we need to update this property. We need to basically push the new chat ID to the array. So what we need to do is we need to do an update of all users whose ID belongs to this user IDs array. So we need to call an update many. So the condition will be such that the ID is inside of the range of user IDs. So what this is gonna do is it's going to tailor the update query to all users whose ID is in fact inside of the user IDs array. Now the second argument is where we're gonna specify what needs to be updated. In this case, we need to push to the array. So we can use the handy push key and we're gonna pass in an object. So this will be chat. So this is basically going to update the chats with the newly created chat. Now we could have also done chat dot underscore ID or just simply dot ID. If you pass in the entire object, Mongoose is gonna be smart enough to take out the ID out of that object and only push in the ID property to the array. So we can leave it off like that. And finally, we're gonna do an await on it. And if everything went well, we're gonna return back the actual chat.